that was it would be nervous. everybody have a chance to take a look at the minutes motion we approve a uh, motion second to approve the minutes any discussion all those in favor aye, aye. opposed motions approved uh, application for certificate of compliance 1231 industrial street suzanne and pablo satello there uh this is the building right across the street from fleet farm and there's it's one parcel with two structures on it um and what they're looking to do um is use a portion of the building that's in the northeast quadrant to do some manu or fabrication and, and light manufacturing of countertop materials um and then also have a sales office in the the multi-tenant building that's out in front um, because of the uniqueness of the use, um, code provides for the certificate of compliance as the, the necessary um, approval mechanism to, to allow for what it is that they want to do. Um, the applicants have the understanding um, that if there is outdoor sales or outdoor storage of anything, that that would have to come back for a CUP. So staff is recommending approval. Okay. Discussion? Anybody? Move to approve with conditions stipulated. Second. You got a motion and second to approve. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. Discussion of possible action on concept development plans for new office building 76 Cooley Road, Elliott Architects. Uh, Brian, do you want to you go ahead and uh, explain the project a little bit? It's sure. fairly unique. Uh, Brian Hines, Elliott Architects, 86 Cooley Road. Um, it's a, uh, a small uh, two-story office building that's uh, just down the street from our current location. Uh, has approximately 13 parking stalls. It's an extremely tight site, obviously, that you can see on the, on the site plan there. So we're working in some um, pretty constrained dimensions. But we've come up with a solution that uh, allows the project to be developed. Um, and uh, it will be uh, an office building for Elliott Architects. We'll be the sole tenant in the building. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's about everything. Approximately 2,000 square feet. Um, there are a few utility and engineering related um, issues that we're working, working through. Mm -hmm. um, I was out yesterday, but Tom Sifko, our engineer, met with you folks to, to kind of go over those. So uh, we're comfortable at this point moving forward, um, recommending approval. Slope, the is slope an issue on this? Is it steep there, 20 degree? What, what, where's the, you can't build on point? Is it 20? It's the slope preservation. Yeah, we have a 20% slope requirement that we're staying out of at this point. Staying yeah. out of it. Correct. And then that sewer water line that they just put in there a year or two ago, you'll have to move that too? Yes, we will have to relocate a portion of that, correct. Okay. And you and you guys would do that? Correct. We're working with uh, the utility. We have to amend the, the easement a little bit for the water line that runs close to, what is it, that northeast corner of the building? Mm -hmm. So that would have to take place, obviously, prior to the final development plans. Move to approve. Second. Got a motion second to approve. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Motion's approved. Discussion possible action on concept development plans for Tumble Fresh 2201 Badger Drive, Lynn Investment Properties, LLC. The Tumble Fresh folks here, I don't know, we've not met. Okay. Does anyone want to go ahead and Thank you. My name is Stephen Lynn. I'm uh, the president of the Lynn Companies, and my address is 9829 Neal Avenue North, Stillwater. Um, so our plan is to build uh, approximately 4,400 square foot laundromat. Uh, it's a very high tech laundromat. It's it's probably not like anything you've seen. Um, we haven't seen any anywhere in the area, but it's 
<clears throat> the concept is uh, it's it, everything's really state of the art. It's all automatic. Uh, the doors open and close by themselves. Even the TVs come on and off by themselves. Alarm systems go on and off by themselves. There's cameras everywhere. It's very um, user friendly. It's it's very inviting. They're very safe. They're very well lit. They're uh, it, beautiful facilities. We have one in Cottage Grove, Minnesota. We have one in White Bear Lake. We have one in Fridley. We're currently doing one in Blaine, one in Coon Rapids, and obviously trying to do one in Hudson. So we're excited to be uh, a part of the community. <coughs> and, uh, we think it's a, a great fit. It, it's a little unique, the way that this development's set up. Um, in that it's it's a, a condo a commercial condo association so what what happens in in these cases is that somebody comes in and purchases the building site which they own and then they purchase rights to develop their parking and and, and trash enclosures and things like that on the site that's part of the master parcel um, that the condo association um, technically owns so um, just a little bit different than a standard, you know, buying a parcel of property and developing um, on your parcel. There's some, um, there's some issues that we've addressed since they made their submittal in terms of where we would like to see um, their connections to sanitary and to water. Um, basically what they'll do is they would cut the street about a 30 foot wide um, section of the street. That way the we don't have utilities kind of traversing all over the place. Um, it just makes it a lot cleaner to go straight across. And, um, and then we're also working on, um, there were some comments pertaining to signage that uh, we'll work on. So, um, but still, the, you know, we're comfortable. Everything else is compliant. We're recommending moving forward. Water usage an issue? Will you consume a lot of water? Do you recycle it? What do you do, may I ask? <laughs> well, you, you can't recycle for a laundromat simply okay. because I own a lot of car washes too, and we do recycle. Um, but in a laundromat environment, no, no one's going to want reclaimed water to wash their clothes. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, the equipment we use is is the best in the business. It's it's the most efficient, certainly. Um, but no, it, it it does take a fair amount of, of water use. Um, are you going to do have dry cleaning in that facility also? No, it, it will not have dry cleaning. It's strictly a laundromat. Yep. Do you have anyone on site, or you have all the cameras, and so you don't? We uh, so it's not manned all the time. Mm -hmm. There there will be cleaning crews and stuff <laughs> that go between our facilities. <coughs> they can help customers and and uh, that kind of stuff. But uh, that's generally during the busier hours. But no, it is not manned all of the time really the 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 beauty of it today is, right, is to be able to operate with limited personnel mm -hmm. I'll move to approve with the stipulations that Mike has put on it please I'll second yeah a motion a second to approve um, I um, did I miss this how, how many machines are you gonna have in there uh, I don't know the exact count but uh, typically our facilities have uh, we have about 50 washers and 50 dryers. We have capacity up to 135 pound units, which is equivalent to 15 laundry baskets. So they're the largest uh, commercial coin operated laundry machines you can buy. Uh, so the, the capacity is incredible. How much does that one cost? <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring my 15. So 20, $24,000 for one machine. Right, but not for me, though. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant. <laughs> yeah, no, that big machine. I that think cost corruption. Yeah. Here, yeah. <laughs> it, it's very expensive. But <laughs> no, it, it costs about $15 to wash your clothes on, in that, but that again right. holds 15 baskets of laundry. Oh. So it's really $1 basket. But there's all different size oh, ones. Right. <laughs> very clear soprano. Yeah. But it's very <laughs> unique. There's there's very few. As a matter of fact, in the, we're we're primarily in Minnesota, but 
we're the only company in Minnesota that has that size equipment. I, I don't know about Wisconsin. So with that in mind, do you get industrial type clients then? Would you get a hospital? Would you get a hotel? Would you get anybody like that? that would there are there? some commercial users, yes, that most, uh, you know, large hospitals would have their own mm -hmm. uh, facilities. But yeah, we get, we get restaurants, uh, other commercial users that <laughs> wash their tablecloths and, you know, all of their linen and that kind of stuff. And some smaller motels and, and things of that nature might on occasion. So what is your target audience, target customer demographic here? Well, we, um, unlike most laundromats that, that really target the low income, we <coughs> target, uh, we target the, the average income and certainly we, we get all ends, but we, uh, because our facilities are so inviting and so bright and so large and, and in, in very prominent areas such as this one in Hudson, you know, we, let's say your wash machine were to break down at home um, or, um, you know, you have the marinas down here, maybe you're living on your boat for three weeks uh, or you, you know, want to wash the, the comforters, your dog pees on the comforter or throws up on the large area rug, you could, you could take a 15 by eight foot rug, roll it up and fit it in this big wash machine we have. So your dog throws up on that and we can clean that, you know, or you can clean that without having to send it out to very expensive dry cleaning. And uh, so, so we appeal to kind of a, a broader range than, than most. Yeah, this one really caught my attention, kind of intrigued me. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Good All luck. Right. Thank you. We're excited. Welcome to Hudson. Yeah. Anybody else? Anything? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. Thanks. Uh, discussion of possible action on certified survey map for Monarch Ventures LLC, 721 First Street and 811 First Street. Uh, in your packets, you'll see that I combined uh, the staff report for items D through F. Um, I hope that it was clear and kind of how I put that process together. Obviously, the first piece is the CSM, which effectively consummates um, what was already discussed um, in terms of the, the land transfer, cleaning up the encumbrance of the um, trail going over private property, and also the development of the seven parking stalls. Um, on First Street, and in return, uh, Monarch gets uh, that wedge of property, which would enable them to, to fit uh, the building that they want, they're desiring to build on the site. So that's the first thing um, that we can discuss that. We'll keep it separate, but I, I think it's, it's just a good visualization of how you know, this process, uh, this discussion will work out tonight. There is one recommendation I have um, that I'd like to see on the certified survey map and that, that easement area by the kayak or the canoe launch, it needs to be listed as not only a parking easement but also a trail easement. We notified all neighbors within 200 feet per code. Um, I don't, I think there's a few people here maybe that might be interested the applicants here as well as their consultants. So, and then David Schofield, who is our consultant working on our behalf, uh, who's with MSA. Uh, he does, he's been doing our Riverway um, ordinance review on this. Obviously it's a, it's a pretty complex and <laughs> complicated process and there's a I ton of imagine. process that would have to go on obviously as this keeps moving forward if it does. So do you want to hear from, do you from neighbors or? Do we want to have them describe what they're doing or? Yeah, that yeah, might be I a good way to good. have them come up and kind of give them an overview or give an overview of these. You got a picture or two, that'd be nice. Is that Chris B with Ayers Associates and Dan Blenheim, architect for the project. Andy and then Alan uh, with CEI Civil Engineers here with us tonight too. I think you have everything in your packet, but maybe brought some boards too. 
So we have a mixed use facility that you've seen uh, some of the preliminary designs for already. And in your packet, we have the, the underground parking, uh, two levels of office, and then the fourth level of the apartments, um, or the third level, I should say, above grade anyway, of apartments or before of those. So the mixed use, that's why we're coming back not only for the CSM, but the rezoning in the process. I think we're on there for three times tonight. And then looking at the materials, we're still playing around with extra elevations between the stone, glass, brick, uh, different materials that we're playing around with on that. We had some discussions again today. But I think in there you had some renderings. We've updated some of the renderings as we've gone. Um, and then, of course, putting on the site and what we have to do for a runoff and then working with MSA and their group on the Riverway. So I'll just respond to any questions you might have. Any other questions? So in this diagram here, can you just explain so where the office part's and what the residential part is? Uh, the uh, third level from the street view there off of First Street, that's, all of that is residential. So that's four units. They're all two, large two-bedroom and three-bedroom units, just four of them up there. Okay. The second or the first level from First Street and the second level there is, will be office. Okay, and then what's this over here? That's part, uh, we have some renderings of that other corner here. That's just a continuation. So the full 7,300 square foot footprint uh, would be office on two levels and residential on the, on the top level. Thank you. So it's a continuity. And so what we did is we kind of did a nod towards the First Street Station, mm -hmm. which uh, Andy owns. And so on that corner, we're trying to complement that and some of that look. And as we turn towards the south, uh, a little bit be more glass, a little bit more of a corporate look uh, on that end. And then we have for the residential piece on the top, we have some nice decks that look out towards the, uh, the river. And then you mentioned that the, the parking, how many parking stalls are underneath? We and have 10 underneath, service? 10 service. underneath. And then are there, surf so the 10 underneath yes. are those for the residents? The Correct. Condo things? And yeah. then how many surface again? Sorry. Well, altogether, it's a blended use with the First Street Station. So if you remember back when they did First Street, they actually yes. overparked it. Mm -hmm. So we have a cross easement not only for utilities and access, but also for parking. Yeah. There, there, there will be eight in that lot and then everything that's currently existing. We love overparking. Yep. And, and, then <laughs> and we're creating the seven additional angled parking on First Street, too. That's part of this project. It'll be part of this cost. Okay. Uh, to recreate those up on the front. A con continuation of what's already there for city parking. And the ultimate height of this building will be? 39 feet. 39 feet. Uh, on an average, <coughs> it, the way they calculate is average all the way around the whole building. And that's from the floodplain. That's from the ground. Well, don't they, don't you have to calculate that from the? Uh, it's actually from the ground, but uh, the grade. From the average grade. But we have to yeah. be out of the floodplain. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 The floor level. Thank you. Right. The floor level. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And then can you just explain again, because I know a lot of people bring their canoes and kayaks and such. So how is that? I'm just trying to visualize how that's going to work. Mm -hmm. Sure. That'd be on the north end. Right. Yeah. So down Orange Street. Mm -hmm. Right now, it just kind of turns it's just kind of a gravel area and that path that path right. starts out so in that area right there there's a, a spot that in that easement would be available for parking now we do have uh, the retention areas and the rain gardens on that end mm -hmm. um, and so that's why we're proposing that as an easement through there and that parking could be added in that location because technically are people pe I, don't, I didn't think people could drive down there yeah, that's been part of park okay Okay. Three large stadiums. Okay. And that's the easement to the river for the canoes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. So that'll be yeah. maintained. Yes. So yes. Yeah. 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 That's no, we're not nothing with our projects. That's project. coming over to the parks. So no. to that's the ours. The problem yeah. is, is you got parking where people are encroaching on private property with part of their cars are on public property and part of their cars oh. are on private property. This easement clears up that issue. Right. Right. You know. Now it's a actually public parking easement and then trail easement too. And the parks plans to improve the entire area now that all this is getting mm -hmm. cleared up and the trail is no longer on 
their property okay. as it is now. And so part of the, uh, the swap with parks for um, the additional property in the, uh, in the parking spaces was to get the trail onto our land now, get that taken care of, and then have the other spaces there that we can improve it for parking and put up. The plan is to have racks in there that people can offload onto and, and fix up that whole area. Okay, so you'll have some signage or kind of some direction so folks know that. It'll be a secret. You got to know a secret <laughs> handshake. <laughs> but with this type of this type of facility, you can't you can't offer offer boat slips and that kind of stuff in front of the place. They can't because we the city owns. The we land. own. Land. Yeah, yeah, we have the report riparian yep. rights to the whole shoreline. So we want to clean up that whole area at the end of Orange Street there from the ramshackle floodplain that it is now and make it nicer all the way around to the bathhouse. But it'll just, it, could, it won't be a boat launch though. It'll just no, be no, continued no. to it'll be, be a, for newer, kayaks, a place kayaks. for okay. people to go in with wakeboards, to Got go it. in with paddle okay. boards, I mean, okay. and, and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, yeah, no, no launching of a, of a vehicle off a trailer or something like that. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Yep. Anything else? Okay. I think it sounds great. I move to approve with, uh, again, any the easement issue that Mike brought up to make sure that's clear, and any the, anything else that just to make it work. Excuse me. Are you approving? Is this item D? This item D. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Item D. Well, the first part. Okay. So that's so just to, for clarity oh, in your motion, thank you. perhaps yeah, yeah, yeah. motion item D. Yeah, thank you, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, was there a second? You're catching me. I'll second motion item D. <laughs> <laughs> You're catching me. Thank you. I All know. right. Got a motion to second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Item E. Thank you. Discussion of possible action on recommending the Common Council set a public hearing date for comprehensive plan amendment and rezoning request from Monarch Ventures LLC, 721 First Street and 811 First Street. So as part of this project, obviously, um, they've submitted a rezoning application to rezone the property to uh, B4, which is that downtown um, transitional district that was established right about the time I got here. So again, with that district, anything that they want to do, office, residential, anything, has to come go through a public hearing process and get a get a cup so um and all this action does is basically you're recommending that council set a public hearing date for <laughs> february 26 18th and that's where obviously we send out a, another batch of notices as part of the comprehensive plan land use amendment and then the mm -hmm. rezoning amendment and then um the common council will hold a public hearing on that item on that specified date. A motion to approve item E. Second. Go ahead. Oh. A motion to second for approval. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. Discussion of possible action on concept development plans for FLAS LLC, 721 First Street, Monarch Ventures LLC. Um, and again, we, we discussed a lot of this, but I didn't know if, if anybody in the audience wanted to come to the podium and ask any questions specifically. Um, obviously, as a chair, you can allow that. Yep. <coughs> we sent out notice, so if anybody has any comment. Anybody? I guess I really Step up, uh, identify yourself and address, please. Hi, I'm Jill Sterling. I'm here with Kelly Hale. She's actually a resident that so this is affecting. Um, I guess a couple of questions is the height. Is that going to be restricting any views for anybody that is, you know, residentially there that's seeing any of the waterfront? Is that from, from not my knowledge of the area and the slope of the area, I would have to say no. Okay. And given what's across the street, who's? But they're also yeah. meeting city code. Mm -hmm. So because of that, it can be a mix, even if maybe they were, if they stay within city code, it's okay. 
So it's a kind of a dual sword answer to you there. Okay. I so don't think so, but it's within their it's rights of, of the code. Right, yeah. something that we, we as the residents should look into then, obviously. And then being on the riverway, isn't there restrictions with glass and that kind of thing? David Schofield, could you, would you introduce yourself and kind of mm -hmm. talk about your role on this project? <coughs> See if you'd. Yeah, I, uh, David Schofield, MSA. We reviewed the um, preliminary plans in regards to the riverway. The uh, riverway ordinance of the city has in place 255-18, adopts the state code, um, NR-118, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, NR-118 requires um, earth-toned uh, materials on the building, I believe, in, from the uh, things that they've shown you, they're mostly using stones. Um, glass is permitted. It can't be uh, extra, how do they word it, um, extra reflective. It has to be standard glass. You can't have mirrored glass, for instance. Um, I don't, at least what I've seen so far doesn't indicate that that is what's being proposed here. Um, with respect to the building height, I do have to make one comment. I, I have a slightly different building height than what the applicant has indicated. Uh, I calculated it out at slightly over 45 feet, and 45 feet is the, the maximum allowed by your code. And so I made a comment in, in the review uh, memo that's in your packet that the building height would have to be, uh, either the building height would have to be slightly lowered or the ground, the average ground elevation around the building would have to be slightly raised. Um, so that is a little bit of a screw up. We're talking about, yep, yeah, that's a six inch about yeah. deviance. So, Correct. and that's in that memo, that's part of one of the conditions that I put in there that that mm -hmm. would be addressed. Yep. Um, one thing I think to tie back to the discussion um, with Elliott Architects, they had a 20% slope. In the riverway, you have a 12% slope uh, limitation. So there's some additional limitations other than just materials and heights that you have to deal with in, in the riverway. Um, the big thing um, that I saw on, on the site, and I think they've done a fantastic job, is that there are setbacks required um, from the ordinary high water mark and from rear uh, lot lines. They've met all those setbacks, so that's that's where you would normally see some issues come up in this sort of a um, project. So there there are some minor comments in my um, in my memo. I, I don't see any reason why they can't address most of those. I guess probably the the one that you may hear about it at the next meeting would be the 12% slope and making sure that that's complied with. Um, but from what I can tell, they're they're meeting those requirements. Um, more for the viewers at, at, at home and, and some background here. A lot of the compliance and the like that you mentioned in terms of setbacks and the like was what was negotiated um, at the parks level when the project was first started to come forward. And it was that that helped drive then the, mm -hmm. the concessions, if you will, that um, the developer made to the city getting the parking added parking spaces along First Street as well as clearing up the problems in the light that we had on the other end. So all that started in the very beginning as the first series of hoops and it's been proceeding since, since then along those lines. And there is a, a significant amount of public process that still has to go through. So we have to notify obviously the DNR and the Regional Planning Commission because um, they have a 30 day written comment period. Um, we have Oh, the rezoning and the comp plan amendment, final development plans, CUPs, um, a lot of process. And um, I think um, that's the only way a project like this, you know, could or possibly even have a chance of moving forward is that it is full, you know, there's a lot of process to go through. That's the intent, right? Yeah. Um, so. It's it's been a it's been an interesting project to work on. It's been it came up I think you know within a few months of me starting or coming back to Hudson. So um, it's been a pleasure working with everybody on it and um, yeah, continuing to do so. May I ask a question? How come there's a six foot disagreement between that height of that building? Your architect said 39, you said 45. That's a lot. He's an engineer and he's an architect. <laughs> 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 no, 
we got David's comments on that, and we've adjusted the drawings. It, it, it wasn't, it was how it was calculated, so it wasn't as dramatic as six feet, but there was a, a foot here or there, so we've actually redesigned a little bit based on that comment we just received uh, just a few days ago. We'll be submitting that back to David and MSA for their review. So are you awarding it then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> well, that and then how the grade is treated around right, the whole right. building no, for the average. I, so. I understood that part of it. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. You bet. So I'm going to ask a, probably a couple of really dumb questions here, but what what is FLAS LLC? What's the difference between that and uh, and Monarch? <laughs> and why? It's your name that no one else has. But, but I, I mean, there are two names here. So what's the difference between <coughs> Monarch and FLAS? So it's a joint. It's a joint. Come on up, Andy, if you would. Yes, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Andy Crown with FLAS and Monarch. Um, so FLAS is a uh, joint venture between myself and the, and the corporate user that's going to be occupying the building. So the property is owned in Monarch Ventures currently. FLAS will be a partnership that's buying the property from Monarch. Got it. Yep. And so why is item <coughs> F referencing only 721 First Street and the other two are referencing 811 as well? Because that would be the address that the building oh, would go on. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yep, there's mm -hmm. two lots in the CSM okay. and 721 and Beaver okay. or whatever. So, okay. yeah. yeah. All right. Anything else? Uh, anything you want to add? No. Okay. I'm cool. good. All right. Um, anybody? I don't think we had a motion on. There's no motion. No. You want a motion? Well, do you need a motion? What do we need to do here, Mike? What's yeah. You want a motion? For that? It's a motion concept yeah. plan, just like the other ones. Yep. Move to approve. With stipulations that you've placed on it, can have yeah, a motion discussion. second to approve further discussion. Th just because this is item F. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Correct. Very good. Yep. I am here to clarify everything for everybody this morning. <coughs> okay. So, any other discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is approved. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Andy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, discussion of possible action on amendment to municipal code chapter 255 zoning section 255-17.8 to assign the plan commission as the review authority in the downtown overlay district this comes out of our discussion last meeting um, you see the, the the language changes I put in there I think it's a strong policy change to make sure that um, it's not just me or a designee and and that we go through a process and <coughs> it's all every activity that if anybody wants to do anything exterior would come in front of plan commission mm -hmm. um, and and you know it, I did add a little extra time in there procedurally to from 30 to 60 because I never know if we'll have a quorum in a month or whatever I think that's mm -hmm. that's the best way to go about it so um, pretty simple code change I think will have a significantly um, or have a very positive impact and you're comfortable with this correct oh Move to approve. Yeah. Like yeah. You don't yeah. want it. He wants it. Yeah. I know. I'll second that. Yeah. 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 All right. Motion to second. Any discussion? Um, I, I want to ask that that we set the public hearing date for the, the council will have to set the public hearing date for it. So the same thing it'd be as we set the public hearing date for E. February 28th. February 20. Yep. Yeah, 26. Six. Common council meeting. Request that the council uh, put set that public hearing date. Okay. That's All right. Part of it. Yep. Yep. So that's incorporated into the motion for this. Yep. Okay. Is that who who made the motion? I did. And you're good. Yeah. Everybody good. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion's approved. Uh, you wanted to lay H aside or? Um. I. I First, I wanted to introduce Emily Sorensen, our new community development clerk. Welcome, um, yeah. Emily. Welcome, Emily. Welcome. She's doing really, really well already. It's, she's taken off. She's coming in just like I did in one of the, you know, the busiest times we've ever seen in the city. So she's taken off. Um, she's even had to, to deal with um, me having to be gone with sick kids a couple times. And I'm really impressed with her um, ambition and her work ethic so far. So um, she put a lot of this or all of it together um, based on the parameters that we discussed after last meeting I'd ask um, that you review it um, simmer on it a little bit uh, Randy's obviously traveling for business today and could, or tonight and couldn't make the meeting and obviously he wanted to be a part of this discussion too so um, take a look at it um, give me your comments Emily or, or myself and um, we'll discuss it at the next meeting 
Mm -hmm. Okay. I have, though, I am not available for the February 23rd meeting, so I don't know. You want to vote now? No. <laughs> No, I don't want to vote now, but I don't know how urgent this is, Mike. I don't. I don't think we can it is. wait to the meeting in February that I'm able yeah. to be at. It's not as simple as the last one. This is a you know, right. Good policy like this might take a. I mean, because some of us have gone through this signage thing before, mm -hmm. so um, I just want to spend a little time looking at. It. I'd like to be a part of the conversation if we can make that work. Okay, absolutely. Nothing ever seems to stick. I mean, we come up with oh. it, and it just it's like it's it's like mosquitoes in the spring they come you swat them and then they go away and you forget about it until next year and that's well, how this garage sale sign thing and yeah. some of that does and it's in it'd be nice to put it to bed I guess. well and i saw a new um digital sign who has the new digital sign up on the hill i just noticed it the other day uh the gas station is it the gas station i can't think of any new digital maybe didn't mike put one in no um because I know I just drove by it and I'm like, wow, that scene it looks new. I'll, have to, I'll go buy it again. Okay. But anyway, so appreciate all the work on this. It's very important mm -hmm. and look forward to the conversation. Mm -hmm. Things you. to keep in mind are enforcement challenges, you know, to be out there driving around and, you know. Picking them up. Picking them up. Um, that's an issue. Uh, obviously, how long, you know, duration's an issue. Um, every community has a similar, pretty similar ordinances to what we have. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's a difficult issue. Like <laughs> I said, it's, it's not, there's Impossible no, to enforce. I don't think anybody's got a silver, a silver bullet for it, for it, you know, and, um, I, but I also understand, um, I've asked actually MI Homes and Creative to come um, to one of our future meetings to kind of give their perspective. Obviously, they're selling a product in our in our subdivisions, and they they see a, a very quantifiable, measurable impact by having some signage mm -hmm. um, out um, in the you know uh, on the right of way. So I, I, there's a good business case for it. There's obviously a safety issue we have to work through. It's it's going to take some time, and um, that's a good thing for us. Just one question: What happens if we said to the residents of Hudson? You want to have a garage sale? Pick up your garage sale signs from the city. We will supply you with blanks and or the things, and we want them back when you're done. Hmm. Just an idea. Interesting. Mm -hmm. they have to or it. they're numbered, and if we find it out on the street, we know who it was, and you're fined. Yeah. Just um, thinking out loud. No, here. no, I know. I'm yeah. Right. But if, they, if they pay a deposit, they'll bring them back. Yeah. yeah. Darn right, and then tell them that you are allowed up to four or six or I mean whatever the amount you come to and and maybe that's a nice way of mm -hmm. addressing this yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Well it addresses those signs. Uh, well, right. yeah. uh, the garage. Yeah. Yeah. It's one piece. Are we hey one piece. We're yeah. a third yeah. of the right. I mean, way idea. there. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. All right. All um, right. anything else? Anybody? Move Appreciate you sending out the meeting dates in advance. That's very yep. helpful. Absolutely. Second. Okay, got a motion to second Emily um, before we take a vote. It's great to have you on board here. Yes, welcome. Yes. Welcome. Uh, welcome. Yeah. yeah. Look forward to working with you. Good to see your name at the bottom. Help you. All right. We got a motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned.